we're just going to go down to the bottom here and we'll just say check triggers okay um there's a few things we're going to want to check um including uh, whether our character is moving. We don't want to activate the trigger before the character is fully on his tile. Uh, additionally, we would need to check and make sure that the tile is indeed a step trigger. And finally, we want to check to see if the trigger has already been activated. So, you know, as our update sub is um, making cycles, it doesn't uh, reinitialize the trigger or re-execute it. Um, so the first thing we'll say is if tune moving equals false, so we want that to be false, and we can say and also map dot tile list. Uh, we want to check our tile that the that the character is standing on and make sure it's a step trigger. So we're gonna say the tile at tune x and tune y is a step trigger, which is a tile property equals true. And finally, and also trigger activated equals false. So as long as the trigger hasn't already been launched, uh, the map tile that the character is standing on is a step, step trigger. <laughs> Sorry, that was my uh, phone. I just got a text message there. Um, if all those uh, are true, then um, we are going to process our trigger. So we'll say process trigger and map dot tile list the map that the tune is standing on tune x and tune y dot uh, trigger script okay so we check the, the tile that the character is standing on, and then we receive the trigger script as a string and run the process trigger on that. Otherwise, trigger activated equals false. Okay, so if none of these are true, the trigger activated is always going to be false. So it'll be waiting for a trigger. Um, I think we should be able to test this. I'm going to go ahead and save my work here. Uh, let me just double check everything. Now, um, in the previous update, I think we only had one map created. I'm going to launch this real quick. Now, um, in my last video uh, the the movement of the character looked really jerky and the reason why is because at the moment I'm recording at a really low frame rate to save uh, on space because I'm on my laptop I don't have a whole lot of free space on this thing still so I've got to keep my video files kind of small uh, so if you see this it's not that the game is running slowly um, it's just because my frame rate is that I'm recording at is very slow so on my screen it looks nice and smooth <laughs> and I will update that so it looks like our map is loading okay we're not getting any errors there uh, so what we need to do is actually go into tiny edit my map editor and create a map to load uh, maybe a world map or something uh, maybe set up a portal or something in here um, let's see if we can build something there going to pause for a moment for a break okay I'm gonna bring up my handy dandy tiny edit here 
my experimental map editor <laughs> is not amazing, but it, it works generally. <laughs> um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, open a map. Oh, I think that's is that the directory? Let's see here. That is the directory. Oh. Oh yeah, it looks like uh, in the previous tutorial I had three maps. Um, I'm guessing that my map is the one that we are loading in here. Let's go down to our world screen, new. Yeah, it looks like, okay, my map is the one that is uh, loading by default there. So that's the one I'm going to want to alter. Um, let me grab my workspace. Uh, to populate my tile values here, my map editor values. Let's see here. I grab another path. Um, ah, there we go. From the old one. Um, I think that was the one. So I'm just going to grab this project because I got a workspace already created in there. Cancel out of that file. Open workspace. that good so I have a nice little palette already set up there now I want to I don't need that anymore come back to this directory and I'm going to load my map okay and if you guys are looking for this in your source code um, that you download from my website uh, the map files and stuff uh, will be in this debug folder. I should also save that workspace in there as well. That'd be kind of a good idea. So you don't have to go through and customize the palette. <laughs> I, I haven't made it so you can add multiple text, you know, or outside textures and stuff yet. This is just, uh, my map editor is really buggy and, um, you know, I have a lot of work to do on that and refining, and it's I just got it to where I can use it. Uh, I can't bring any external um, tile sets or anything yet, so it just uses what what I have in the tutorial. So let's just go ahead and open my map. Hey, there it is. So you can see that um, my start location is this little blue guy right here, and that's the default one. Uh, if we want to overwrite it, say, imagine that this uh, is a cave that we have created, and we may well do that uh, for fun. Um, but if you exit the cave, you don't want to start back here. You want to be able to override that start location, uh, the start parameters. So if this is our starting location uh, where the game begins, you know, you start out in this little valley, you got to find your way out of it, you enter the cave, you know, your cave may will most likely have you know an entrance and an exit so um, you want to be able to o override those positions and set your character you know to the respective position um, so I could um, change my start position here if I wanted start them over here I could start them on the beach um, but for now let's just create a little portal for fun and that will we should be able to test our teleport let's see set one here and we'll set one on the beach um, those are not blocked I gotta name that portal I'm going to save this workspace to the same directory like I'm there already, so I'm going to call this um, um, my workspace. That way, when I uh, put this out on my website for download, you guys can just load that instead of having to hit this tile load test and repopulate and change all your tile values and stuff. Uh, these ones should be preset to which ones are blocked and things like that. 
Um, so creating the portal graphic doesn't in itself do anything. We actually have to add a trigger to that tile. And to do that, I am going to go to my little trigger builder here and populate that trigger script. Um, in this case, I need to figure out what the coordinates of this tile is and this one. And I will set um, the portal or the trigger at the opposing location. Now, <laughs> keep in mind, you do not want to set your portal location directly on top of the other portal location. Otherwise, as soon as you arrive there, it's going to send you back and, you know, you're going to end up in this uh, crazy infinite loop, probably. I don't know if that would just lock up your application or if it would crash altogether, but you would likely be stuck in an infinite loop there. So uh, say you enter this portal, you might want to end up in front of the other one and vice versa. So let's look at our, before I do this, I'm going to go ahead and this tile appears to be 10-1 um, and this one appears to be 513. So when I enter 513, I want to go to 1010 uh, using these guys right here. So I'll say trigger builder and I will say teleport add a bar and uh, remember this can be a random string and I will add another bar and then I will set my coordinates that I want to teleport to 10 10. Now if I were loading a map I'd want to supply a value here for my second um, index. So I can say create trigger and then I will place that here Hopefully when my character steps on that, he will be teleported to here. So we want to do the same thing for this one, but in this case we want to teleport in front of this other portal. So I'm going to say um, 512 is my destination. Teleport. Oops. And 512 my destination, my override. So I'll create that trigger and set it on that tile. And hopefully if our map, if our trigger handler is working properly, it'll uh, receive that string from those tiles when we step on them. Uh, save my map. And I'm just going to save over my old one. Yes, please. Shrink that guy down. And hope for the best. 